Hey, it's Ken, CRNS Motorsports. Been a busy couple of weeks. Kind of give you a clue what's going on with Bad Kitty. She's got her butt up in the air right now. Gas gauge, not working properly. Never has. Can't figure it out. So, oh, drain the tank. Pull the sending unit. There's simple testing you can do using a multimeter that will show you if your sending unit is working properly and i'm going to demonstrate that here in a minute but uh so it got that straightened out lo and behold it all turned out to be the wrong fuel level gauge autometer sent me one for a general motors every manufacturer and even different models within a manufacturer have different specifications for a fuel sending unit. These specifications are measured in ohms. And so let's say for the Ford, the Cougar, it, this year was uh, 78 to uh, 10 ohms is what the range is. And so ohms is a measure of resistance. You can easily check your sending unit. It's just a process of elimination. But, you know, I had to drain the gas tank, had to pull the meter, and I still couldn't uh, get the gauge to do what it should be doing. In fact, at one point, I got it, I really bypassed everything, and it was reading absolutely 100% backwards. When it was empty, it was showing three quarters, and when it was full, it was showing the quarters tank. I finally broke down, did a lot of research. And I knew what gauge I was supposed to have, and I called Autometer. That's who I bought the gauges from, a complete package for a Cougar. And they said, uh, 6115, yeah, that's the gauge you're supposed to have. And I said, well, how do I verify that I have the proper gauge? And they said, oh, it'll be on a stamp on the back. So I got to pull the dash. I got to pull the gauge out. Lo and behold, it's a 6113. Hmm, that fits a General Motors. What model? I don't know. Totally different range. And so I spent literally two days ripping up wire, pulling out the dash, trying to figure it all out, and they sent me the wrong gauge. But then if I'm nice to them, and I send it back to them, and I send proof of purchase, and I send a letter stating what happened, they might send me the proper gauge back. What a bunch of crap. Not real pleased with their customer service. So I've sent all that off, so I'm kind of waiting now. But I've done some basic testing with the, uh, reconnected all the wiring. First, I bypassed all the wiring, thought I made a wiring mistake. I had a bad wire, bad ground. And then, so I mean, I've been to the extreme. But now I've reconnected, put the gauge back in the car, reconnected it. I know what it should be reading. And lo and behold, it does read. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. And then I'm going to show you on the bench how you can look at your fuel sending unit and what how it's an easy test it really easy and it will tell you if you got a good sending unit or bad sending unit so let's get going oh and uh the other thing we we took uh, bad kitty put it on a trailer towed it down to my buddy it's sunny at second opinion in fort worth and uh had him go through the front end and align it and put it uh, where it should be and he did a great job for me sunny i've known sunny for 25 plus years and uh, the newer cars I don't get involved in all the electronics so if I got an issue it goes to Sonny and Sonny did a great job did not rake me over to Coles looked at the whole car over gave it a thumbs up and uh, he just said uh, the, your paint job looks like a bass boat <laughs> but that's okay anyway so the front end is squared away so if I can get this damn gas gauge done I'm gonna start cruising I'm ready to go so anyway, let's get to it. I'm going to show you a few tricks and uh, see what uh, maybe that may come in helpful if you run into a problem. Take care. What we have right here, this is the fuel sending unit out of the 67 Cougar, which I'm sure Mustang's exactly the same. And I suspect that they didn't change. That they went for, you know, from let's say 65 to 70, it was all pretty much the same unit. This is a standard just with a fuel pump. It's not for fuel injection. All right. The rating on this one, if you look it up in the Summit catalog and Jag's catalog or any place else, there is 78 to 10. 78 is empty, like you see now, all the way down. 
and 10 is when it's all the way up. So you got your multimeter, you turn it on, you go into the ohm section, you put it 200. Ground out to any place here that you would like to, it doesn't matter. And then hit the fuel sending wire. You'll have it 76, that's close enough. Plus or minus 5 is what they say. Cindy, if you take that all the way up, 8.4, it's supposed to be 8. Pretty damn close. Go halfway. Okay. And the, it will change for every position you put it in. So this is a good functioning sending unit. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's right on spec. In a second, I'm going to show you the, uh, the fuel injection with the OEM Holly with the pump that's internal in the tank and its fuel sending unit because I had to check it. And I did, and we'll see the results. Okay, so I tested the first meter. Now this is the OEM, the Holly OEM fuel pump and sending unit. It's all one piece. You have to disconnect the sending unit and reinstall it when you're in the tank. It all won't fit through as one piece. So you put in the sock, you put in the pump, you feed it through, and then you feed in the float, and then you reconnect it. Two screws right here. All right. But the reading, again, should be an empty, should be roughly 78 ohms, and at full, it should be 8 ohms. So we're going to take the meter, and these are my wires. The purple wire is hot, or actually the gauge, and this is the ground, the black and white. So all the way down should be 73. We got 72. I mentioned before, you got a plus or minus factor of 5. So we're well within range. All the way up, here, put that up for you, please. We should be at 8. We're 10.2. All right, close enough. Again, it's within the margin of error. So, and anything in between, if you let down, let's say halfway, you see the number changes. It's a sliding scale. All right, so I went through this yesterday. And I said the the gauge in the car always read an eighth of a tank, maybe. And but if you disconnect the the source, the resistance source from the gauge, you can test the meter, and the meter will go all the way to full and pass full, and that shows you the needle is swinging. All right, so we accomplished that, no problem at all. And I'll show you the picture. Here's where the issue came in. So I took this, went to the back of the car, connected the wires, connected the gauge wire, connected the ground to the meter itself. So I ran some big leads, bypassing all the wiring I had in the car, just to make sure I didn't have a fault in the wiring. And the meter, the actual gauge itself, came to life. But it was totally backwards. When it should have been on the empty setting, when it was reading 73, on the meter, the fuel level indicator, which was an auto meter, it was reading three quarters of a tank. But when I raised it up, when it should be reading 8 ohms, indicating full, the meter was, went down to like less than a quarter of a tank. And then if you went in between, the gauge and the meter worked. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me what the hell was going on. So I reached out to Autometer. I called them on the phone. I talked to two techs there. And what it turns out is I bought a set of gauges, the entire set. It came in a kit for a Cougar, very specifically. And I verified that I ordered the right thing, and they said yes. Then I broke it down to the meter itself. I should be running a 6115 meter. And lo and behold, no. The meter they sent me was a 6113, which is for a General Motors application. They sent me the wrong meter. Every manufacturer, when they do, and then they may even change my models, but when they do fuel level gauges, you know, empty to full, it's, it's got to be in a range, or it has a range of ohms. And... 
it could be 0 to 150, it could be 50 to 120. In my case, it's 8 to 78. And that's what a Ford is for this year. And I did a lot of research to realize I had the wrong meter. It wasn't easily discovered. I ordered a Ford Cougar gauge package. And unfortunately, they put in a GM uh, fuel level indicator. I've learned a lot. And so I was going to pass some of this one to you. Now, what I got here, you see my multimeter, just a cheap old Craftsman that I've had for years. I don't even know where it came from. You've got an ohm setting right here. See, it says ohms. Okay, so if you're checking a fuel sending gauge, ohms is a resistance. In other words, uh, how much is being grounded. So it's a, it displays a resistance value. So you take your gauge and you move it to 200. Uh, one, two, many. There we go. I'm at 200. So you take that and it, it reads one. There's your two probes. So the black you run to a ground and the red you run to the sending unit wire. The wire that connects directly to the sending unit. Okay, I've got the probe into the fuel sending unit wire that feeds to the full fuel gauge. All right. And I got my meter turned on. I'm at the 200 setting right there on the ohms side. All right, so all I need to do is take this probe and put it to ground. The tank is empty. I've reinstalled it. All the wiring is connected. Put it on. Seventy-three. I'm told on the internet, watching various things, they say plus or minus five ohms. When I fill it up, it should read ten. Here's the game plan. We're going to put gas back in the car. At the same time, I'll be filming the meter. Okay, so if everything works as planned, the meter, which tank is empty, should be 73, 75. And then, as gas is added, it will go down to, you know, if we can get it all the way full. I'm not quite sure how much gas I have. But if we got it all the way full, in theory, it should be a 10. Now, the car being jacked up is... Uh, probably going to affect the tank a little bit being at an odd angle but uh, let's give it a try and see what it works okay I put four gallons in it and it dropped it from 73 down to 30 so what I'm going to do is go ahead and keep putting more gas in it I got about another five gallons I can put in it and we'll watch the meter and see if it works Looks like we know what we're doing. Things are going our way, finally. And this car has been a struggle, yeah, but it's coming our way. We're going to start putting some miles on it. With any luck, KC comes over Sunday. We're going to cruise it around. Just making sure, just going through the checklist and whatever needs to be taken care of, that's what we're going to do. As you can see, the gas gauge, the car is still jacked up, so I don't expect it, and it doesn't. Uh, come back to 10 because I don't have enough gas and the car still jacked up. Uh, I do lower it a little bit. Um, we got to bleed the brakes before we go out cruising on Sunday. But I think it gets down to 15, 16. So we're there. We got it whipped. The new gauge, when it shows up, I'll put it in and uh, I think we're all good to go. So Sunday, we start cruising. As always, please like and subscribe. It means the world to us. doesn't cost you nothing. And until then, you take care. Be safe. Be good.